most part. And it's based somewhat on their level of emotions. And their emotions are a little different than ours. You see, they're a little finer. They don't have many of the emotions that you and I are still working out, hate, anger, and some of the other frustrating things. Those lower, baser energies can get in the way. Billy says if he has any anger, fear, jealousy, or he's just worried about things, that once this beam takes him apart molecularly and brings him up into the ship, he may not come back together exactly the way that he started. So the Pleiadians early on in the contacts had a habit usually of picking Billy up when he didn't even know about it, when he was clear of mind. Think about that. Billy may have been standing around the farm, sawing a log or working with something, and suddenly find himself just standing inside of the beam ship holding his saw. Quite often they would also pick him up out of his office, where he may be clear of thought or just concentrating on them. Good way to fly, right? There's another way to get up into the ship. You can be lifted up also by virtue of what we might think of as anti-gravity. It just lifts you up. They look at it more as a way of lifting up cargo and things and don't usually use it for people. Billy's tried that. He says usually the ship might be up 300, 400 meters or so, and this lifting sensation just starts pulling you up into the ship. Now, when that happens, it may take four, five, six seconds for you to get all the way up into the ship. You can see everything around you as you go flying by the trees and find yourself zooming away from the ground. Now, there's a problem, he says, that if you fall off or you get upset and uh, feel like you're going to fall over, and you do, there's no way to catch you. It's particularly spooky on your way down. So Billy says if you're going to have contacts with the Pleiadians and you have a choice, request beaming. You have whole organizations which investigate our beam ships, but they have little material that is really authentic. However, the authorities already know much about our existence, but they continue to deny the fact of our existence or even the fact of their research. They want only to rule the cosmos but are not able to create on Earth peace among themselves. The Pleiadians have now lived for 50,000 years peacefully. That's because they say their government is a lot different than ours. They now let those with the most wisdom rule. Here in Andromeda live a race of people who no longer live in the material body, a race that has evolved to a point of light. The Pleiadians take suggestions from these people and live by that wisdom. Also, among the other questions that did come up, Billy had to ask, would they interfere in the event we had a nuclear war? And where did they draw the line? What is their sense of morality? The Pleiadians explained that they belong to a federation, you might call it, a group or an alliance of other races just like themselves that advanced to about the same level. And they'd all come together and decided, you might say, the rules governing planets like ourselves. The rules go something like this. As long as we are confined to our own solar system, not able to leave it, not able to affect those other races out there, then we're pretty much on our own down here, being left alone to do what we want. Once we can leave our own solar system, though, and come out there, then we have to start bending to someone else's rules. There are already races out there that already have rules trying to keep the peace. They're a little worried about us leaving the planet the way we are, with so many nations arguing and bickering. This is something we have to work on. They don't interfere, they say, in our political or our power structure as long as we are confined to our own solar system. But the time is rapidly approaching when technically we're going to be able to leave and then we're going to have to face up to that. They're concerned about whether or not we will align ourselves with them and with other peaceful races or will we very stubbornly go ahead our own way. This is something that we have to decide. And neither is it consistent with the truth that our brothers and sisters come from other parts of space on behalf of a god to bring to the world the long-awaited peace. In no case do we come on behalf of anybody, since creation by itself confers no obligation on us. It is a law unto itself, and every form of life must conform with it and become a part of it. Pleiadians have several different sizes of ships serving different needs. The one you're looking at, they think of as a time travel ship. It's a little larger than the regular beam ship. It's about 28 feet in diameter. It has that unusual ability to travel in time. Billy was able to travel to the 13th century and many other time zones. 
On a couple of occasions, though, he took some remarkably clear pictures of this ship, and when investigators were investigating his case to try to determine the validity of it, it was this series of pictures that was used and tested by the computer. This picture, called the Sunshot, was important because it clearly shows the ship behind the tree, thus ruling out the possibility of small models. Pictures were taken to several different places and analyzed by a computer. They were looking for strings or any other devices that Billy may have used to actually fake the pictures. Actually, models were even made at one particular time to compare with the real pictures to see if the computer could catch them. The computer caught them each time. This is a digitized picture or a blow up of some of those pictures that were used by the computer. No evidence of a hoax has ever been discovered in Billy's pictures. Landing tracks were also investigated. Gamma radiation readings were found. Here's a picture of Billy standing by one of the landing tracks. The most unusual thing about the landing tracks is you can see here that even months later, the grass was still growing the opposite direction. The ship apparently had overcome Earth's gravity and caused the grass to grow the wrong direction. Billy says insects by the thousands were attracted to it for a long period of time. The grass was never broken, it just grew the wrong way. On several occasions, Billy was allowed to actually make sound recordings of the beam ships as they flew overhead. Normally, the ships flew very quietly, but when they came out, Billy made the recording that you're listening to now. The sound recordings have been analyzed by sound engineers who state that at this time with our present technology, they don't know of any way that we could duplicate this sound. This next series of pictures is very unique because the tree you're looking at no longer exists in this location. You see, after Billy took these pictures, he took some friends out with him to show them where the contact had happened. The tree was not there. He later asked Simyasi what happened. She explained that the ship somehow had leaked some radiation that had damaged the tree. They were very concerned about the welfare of the tree, so they decided to do something about it. What they did was they changed the tree's time so it did not exist in a time where it could get hurt. What they've actually done is gone back to the point when the tree was seeded. They then moved the seed so the tree grew up someplace else. Now the most unique thing here is that no one else in the neighborhood has any reminiscence of that tree ever growing there now. Billy has pictures of a tree existing, but they don't believe him. You can go to the farmer who lives on this property now and ask him about the tree that was supposed to be there. He thinks Billy's totally crazy because the tree is not there. He has no memory of it ever growing there, but the picture exists. This picture even shows the ship going around behind the tree. This concept of time may seem fantastic to us. Could it be part of a larger knowledge that the Pleiadians are gently awakening us to? Above everything stands one force alone. We call it the creation. It regulates the laws over all, the life and death of everything in the universe, because it is everything in the universe. Among the many things discussed with the Pleiadians was life. And I don't mean just human life. You see, to the Pleiadians, everything is alive, not just human life. There is animal life. There is plant life. Even the planet Earth is alive. All of these things are created out of the same creational energy. They are just manifested at what we call different levels of density. And they evolve in different ways. You and I evolve by having material lifetimes. We do what is called dying, and then we come back, hopefully, a little more evolved than we were the last time. Did you know that planets also evolve? Now, planets don't die like you and I do, but they have what are called ice ages. The planet Earth is on a 700,000-year cycle of its evolvement. It's been through several of them already. Originally, an ice age will cover the entire planet. As the planet gets older and older, there's less need for it. It has to make way for things that are more evolved than it is. So ice ages cover a smaller area of the planet. But the planet is evolving. Now, what does that mean? That means every time there's an ice age, when the ice age is over, rocks will evolve to something just a little bit higher in evolution. A small plant may be an even more beautiful flower. 
A tree will even be larger and more beautiful than it was. A fish may evolve up into a larger type of fish. Even the squirrels, the chipmunks, all the little creatures, everybody evolves, including you and I. Now, we're not real cognizant of that on this planet. And perhaps, maybe, we're being just a little irresponsible in the way we share our planet with all the other life that's on it, including the planet. The pictures I'm going to show you now are satellite pictures that appeared in Discover Magazine not too long ago. It can give us a, a good look at the ozone problem. We're all becoming familiar with that, the lack of ozone and the change in it, and how it's going to affect us. Let's have a look at these pictures. The satellite picture of the southern pole of Earth shows the condition of the ozone as in 1980. In 1975, the Pleiadians warned Billy that we were seriously damaging the ozone. We had started that over 60 years ago. They urged Billy to send letters to scientists around the world, which he did. He got no reply. In 1986, this satellite picture shows the ozone hole now 3,000 miles in diameter, covering over 1.2 million square miles. This allows ultraviolet radiation to come into our atmosphere at a deadly rate, killing the photosynthesis process. At the moment, we have no known technology to repair this. It could take thousands of years for nature to do it on its own. The Pleiadians want us to know we have a very unique planet, an abundance of life. We benefit from having so many extraterrestrial ancestors in the past. 22 million years ago, the ancient Lyrians came here, and when they did, they brought with them some of their culture and, of course, some of their plant and animal life. In the last 389,000 years, we've been visited by many different civilizations throughout our galaxy. Some of them have stayed for a short period of time. Others have lived here for a while. They've brought with them wonders from their world, and they've taken back many wonderful things from ours. You see, the important thing is for us to understand that we're not only not living alone in the universe, but we're sharing a planet with a lot of other wonderful life forms. You are a spiritual being going through a series of material lives on purpose to gather information to feed your spirit and grow. And you're sharing this world with a lot of other life forms doing the same thing in their own way. See, animals evolve, plants evolve, and of course the planet itself evolves. We have to live in harmony with all of these different life forms. In our galaxy alone, there are over 44 million planets that naturally evolved the human form on its own. In the trillions of years of its life, at the moment there are 7.5 billion planets that have human life and over 340 different shapes of the human form, different sizes, shapes, and colors, and so forth. But what about the Pleiadian planets? The Pleiadians are descendants of the Lyrians, and they tell us about a third of us have their genetics in them. Well, Simyasi says that on their planets, 